This is the story of World War II, the biggest conflict in human history. Amid the twilight of World War II, with the Axis powers on the brink of defeat, there emerged a final, unexpected victory for Germany. This account delves into the Battle of Bautzen, the last significant triumph for the Wehrmacht. They sowed the wind, and now they are going to reap the whirlwind. It was the beginning of the end for Adolf Hitler. Through strategic mastery and sheer resilience, this battle unfolded against all odds, offering a compelling narrative on the complexities of war and the unpredictability of military engagements. This chapter sets the stage for a detailed exploration of this pivotal confrontation, igniting curiosity about the factors leading to this surprising German success. Prelude to the battle. As April 1945 dawned, the European theater of World War II was in its final act. The Soviet Red Army, with its vast numbers and relentless push towards Berlin, seemed invincible. Yet, in the shadow of an impending Axis defeat, a strategic location in eastern Germany became the unlikely setting for a last German victory, the area around Bautzen. Bautzen, situated in Saxony, near the Polish border, was more than a picturesque town. It was strategically significant, offering control over critical transportation and communication lines. For the Germans, it represented a final stronghold a potential bulwark against the Soviet advance. For the Soviets, seizing Bautzen was crucial for consolidating their gains and ensuring a swift move towards Berlin. The German forces, though battered by continuous retreats and losses, were not yet broken. Under the command of seasoned officers, they prepared to make a stand. The Wehrmacht, pulling together remnants of divisions, panzer units, and Volkssturm militia, was determined to hold the line. They were bolstered by the hope of delaying the Soviet advance, protecting Berlin for as long as possible, and perhaps negotiating a more favorable surrender to the Western Allies. Meanwhile, the Soviet forces, confident and eager for victory, approached Bautzen with the expectation of a swift conquest. Commanded by generals who had led the Red Army from the depths of the Soviet Union to the heart of Europe, they were a formidable force experienced in the art of rapid, large-scale offensive operations. As the two sides converged around Bautzen, the initial movements set the stage for the battle. The Germans skillfully utilized their intimate knowledge of the local terrain, setting up defensive positions and ambush points. They also launched localized counterattacks to disrupt Soviet supply lines and communication, aiming to sow confusion and delay the enemy's advance. Forces in play The Battle of Bautzen, while not as large in scale as other confrontations on the Eastern Front, was a complex engagement characterized by the strategic deployment of diverse military assets and the leadership of experienced commanders. Both the German and Soviet forces brought to bear the culmination of years of warfare experience, innovation, and adaptation. The German defense was orchestrated by a command structure that, despite the attrition of war, remained highly experienced and tactically adept. At the helm were officers seasoned by years of combat, many of whom had honed their skills on multiple fronts. This leadership was pivotal in maximizing the effectiveness of the remaining German military assets and in executing the defensive strategies that characterized their approach to the Battle of Bautzen. In terms of troop strength, the Germans were at a numerical disadvantage. However, they compensated for this with the quality of their remaining forces and their strategic use of the terrain. The core of the German defense was composed of several divisions, including remnants of elite panzer divisions, infantry units, and elements of the Volkssturm, the national militia. Although the Volkssturm was less experienced and often poorly equipped, their commitment to the defense of German territory was a significant psychological boost to the overall morale of the defenders. The German forces were supported by a variety of military assets, including tanks and artillery. The Panzer divisions, although not as formidable in number as in previous years, 
still fielded a number of Panther and Tiger tanks. These tanks were among the most advanced and heavily armored in the German arsenal, capable of engaging Soviet armor effectively. In addition, the Germans deployed a range of anti-tank guns and portable Panzerfaust anti-tank weapons, which could be devastatingly effective in the hands of well-trained troops. Artillery units, equipped with howitzers and multiple rocket launchers, provided crucial support, laying down barrages that disrupted Soviet movements and inflicted significant casualties. The Soviet command structure was also characterized by its experience and adaptability. Soviet generals, many of whom had overseen the Red Army's resurgence and advance from Stalingrad to Berlin, were adept at managing large-scale offensive operations. Their strategic and operational insights were instrumental in the planning and execution of the Soviet approach to the Battle of Bautzen. Soviet troop strength significantly outnumbered the German defenders. The Red Army deployed several armies consisting of rifle divisions, tank brigades, and artillery regiments. The Soviet forces were a mix of battle-hardened veterans and newer recruits, the latter eager but lacking the experience of their senior comrades. This disparity in experience within the Soviet ranks would play a role in the dynamics of the battle. The Soviet military assets included a substantial number of tanks, with the T-34 being the most prevalent. The T-34, renowned for its robustness and firepower, was a mainstay of the Soviet armored forces and had been improved throughout the war to maintain its effectiveness against German armor. Alongside the T-34, the Soviets deployed heavy tanks such as the IS-2, which had the firepower to challenge even the formidable German Tiger tanks. The Soviet artillery arm was formidable, with a vast array of field guns, howitzers, and Katyusha rocket launchers, known for their devastating salvos that could break enemy lines and morale. The Battle Unfolds The Battle of Bautzen, fought from April 22nd to April 27, 1945, stands as a testament to the complexity and ferocity of late World War II engagements. This period saw both German defensive prowess and Soviet offensive might clash over a strategic locale, with each day bringing its own set of challenges, maneuvers, and pivotal moments. The battle commenced on April 22nd, with the Soviet forces launching a pre-dawn offensive aimed at penetrating German defensive lines near Bautzen. Utilizing the cover of darkness, Soviet infantry supported by tank brigades moved swiftly, seeking to exploit gaps in the German defenses. However, the Germans, anticipating such maneuvers, had fortified their positions, utilizing the terrain to their advantage. As daylight broke, intense fighting erupted, particularly around key road junctions and villages that dotted the landscape. German panzer units, employing hit-and-run tactics, managed to delay the Soviet advance, inflicting considerable losses on the Soviet armored units. Recognizing the potential for a strategic reversal, German commanders launched a series of counterattacks on April 23rd. Focused around the town of Bautzen, these counterattacks aimed to encircle and cut off the advancing Soviet forces. German tanks, including the formidable Panthers and Tigers, spearheaded these maneuvers, engaging Soviet T-34s in fierce tank battles. Meanwhile, German infantry, supported by artillery, moved to reclaim lost positions. By the day's end, the Germans had managed to regain some ground, creating a temporary disarray within the Soviet ranks. In response to the German counteroffensive, the Soviet command swiftly deployed reinforcements, including fresh rifle divisions and additional armored brigades. On April 24th, these reinforcements entered the fray, bolstering the Soviet offensive efforts. With renewed vigor, the Soviets launched a series of assaults across the entire front, focusing particularly on flanking maneuvers intended to surround German positions. Despite heavy resistance and significant casualties, the Soviets managed to make critical advances, particularly in the northern sector, threatening to outflank the German defenses. April 25th marked a day of relentless combat, with neither side gaining a decisive advantage. The Germans continued their defensive operations, effectively utilizing their remaining armored forces to counter Soviet breakthrough attempts. 
Soviet forces, undeterred by losses, pressed on with their numerical superiority, making incremental gains. Artillery duels became a defining feature of the day, with both sides deploying heavy barrages in an attempt to dislodge the other. The fighting was particularly intense around key heights and villages, which changed hands multiple times throughout the day. By April 26, the cumulative toll of the previous day's battles began to manifest. German forces, while still resisting fiercely, started to show signs of exhaustion and depletion in manpower and equipment. In contrast, the Soviet commitment to overwhelming the German positions finally began to bear fruit. Breakthroughs in the German lines, achieved through concentrated assaults and superior numbers, allowed Soviet forces to exploit gaps and advance deeper into German-held territory. This day marked a significant shift in the battle's dynamics, with the Soviets gradually encircling and isolating key German units. Tactical Analysis The Battle of Bautzen, occurring in the waning days of the Second World War, stands out not only for its ferocity, but also for the intricate play of strategy and tactics that led to the last significant German victory. This chapter delves into the nuanced strategic and tactical moves employed by both sides, highlighting the German counteroffensive strategies, the Polish and Soviet responses, and the factors contributing to the eventual German success. The German command, fully aware of their precarious situation by April 1945, demonstrated remarkable strategic ingenuity at Bautzen. Facing overwhelming odds, they opted for a defensive strategy that leveraged the area's urban and rural terrain to create fortified positions. These strong points were designed to inflict maximum casualties on the advancing Soviets while preserving German forces for counterattacks. The German use of mobile warfare, particularly their adept employment of armored units in hit-and-run tactics, disrupted Soviet supply lines and command structures, sowing confusion among the ranks. The decision to launch counteroffensive operations was a bold move that reflected the Germans' deep understanding of operational warfare. By choosing to attack at critical junctures, the Germans managed to temporarily halt the Soviet advance allowing German forces to regroup and exert control over key areas. This approach not only showcased the Germans' tactical flexibility, but also their ability to execute combined arms operations effectively, integrating infantry, armor, and artillery in a cohesive manner. The Polish and Soviet forces, initially taken aback by the ferocity and coordination of the German counterattacks, had to quickly adapt to the evolving battlefield dynamics. The Soviets in particular relied heavily on their numerical superiority and the sheer volume of their artillery and armor to wear down German defenses. However, this brute force approach was met with mixed success, as German tactical defenses proved remarkably resilient. The Soviets' ability to rapidly deploy reinforcements and launch counter-counterattacks demonstrated their operational depth and logistical capabilities. Yet the effectiveness of these maneuvers was often compromised by the Germans' tactical proficiency in urban and defensive warfare. The Polish units, fighting alongside the Soviet forces, played a crucial role in the battle's later stages, particularly in securing flanking positions and engaging in close-quarters combat in urban areas. Their commitment and valor were instrumental in maintaining the momentum of the Soviet offensive efforts. The German tactical success at Bautzen can be attributed to several factors. First, their ability to conduct flexible defensive operations, quickly transitioning to offensive maneuvers when opportunities presented, showcased their doctrinal adaptability. Second, the German forces' experience and skill in exploiting terrain and fortifications to their advantage were critical in delaying Soviet advances and inflicting significant casualties. However, this tactical success was not without its limitations. The Germans were fighting a losing battle in terms of resources and manpower. Each German counterattack, though tactically successful, further drained their limited reserves, and the lack of reinforcements meant that each loss was irreplaceable. 
Furthermore, the strategic situation on the Eastern Front left the Germans with no prospect of a strategic victory. Their tactical wins at Bautzen were ultimately Pyrrhic, delaying but not altering the inevitable Soviet advance towards Berlin. Aftermath and Implications The Battle of Bautzen, while a tactical anomaly in the closing days of World War II, left an indelible mark on the course of the conflict and the collective memory of its participants. This chapter examines the immediate aftermath of the battle, the casualty figures, its impact on the broader war effort, and how the battle has been perceived and analyzed in post-war historiography. The immediate aftermath of the Battle of Bautzen saw a brief moment of respite for German forces in the region. The victory, albeit temporary, allowed for a strategic withdrawal of German units to more defensible positions, delaying Soviet and Polish forces. However, the cost was steep. Casualty figures for the battle are a testament to its ferocity, with estimates suggesting significant losses on both sides. German casualties were reported to be in the thousands, including killed, wounded, and missing, a substantial number for an army already stretched thin by continuous retreats and losses on multiple fronts. Soviet and Polish forces also suffered heavily, with casualty figures similarly high. The losses were not just in manpower, but also in tanks and artillery, which had been crucial to the Red Army's blitzkrieg strategy across Eastern Europe. These losses momentarily slowed the Soviet advance, giving the Germans a temporary tactical advantage, but at a high cost. The Battle of Bautzen's impact on the broader war effort was, in the grand scheme, limited. While it represented a localized setback for Soviet and Polish forces, it did not alter the overall trajectory of the war. The Red Army's vast numerical superiority and the inexorable push towards Berlin meant that the battle, though a tactical defeat, was a strategic non-factor in the eventual Soviet victory. However, the battle did have implications for German forces, highlighting the Wehrmacht's resilience and tactical creativity even as defeat loomed. It also underscored the limitations of tactical victories in the face of strategic defeat. The resources and manpower expended at Bautzen could not be replaced, further weakening German defenses against the continuing Soviet onslaught. The historiography of the Battle of Bautzen is complex, influenced by the narratives of the Cold War and shifting national memories. In East Germany and Poland, the battle was initially downplayed or omitted from official histories, likely due to its portrayal of a successful German counterattack so late in the war. In contrast, West German histories often highlighted the battle as a testament to German military prowess, even in the face of inevitable defeat. In recent years, the Battle of Bautzen has been re-evaluated by historians, with a focus on its tactical significance and the human cost of the engagement. This re-evaluation has been part of a broader trend towards a more nuanced understanding of the Eastern Front. Recognizing the complexity of the conflict and the experiences of soldiers on all sides. The battle's significance has also been explored in discussions of military strategy, particularly in studies of urban warfare and the defense in depth. The German tactics at Bautzen have been cited as examples of effective urban defensive strategies, contributing to military doctrinal developments in the post-war period. Voices from the Front Line in the shadow of strategic maneuvers and tactical analyses lies the personal experiences of the soldiers and civilians caught in the tumult of the Battle of Bautzen. This chapter delves into the human aspect of the battle, piecing together narratives from diaries, letters, and interviews to offer a glimpse into the personal struggles, heroism, and tragedy that unfolded. The battlefields of Bautzen were a crucible of fear, courage, and endurance for the soldiers. German troops, facing the existential threat of defeat, found themselves fighting not just for strategic positions, but for survival itself. The letters home, often filled with a mix of defiance and despair, reflect the complex emotions of men who sensed the war's end but were compelled to fight on. One German soldier's diary entry poignantly captures this sentiment. We fight on, 
amidst the ruins of our country, knowing full well the futility of our sacrifice, yet bound by duty and honor to stand our ground. On the Soviet and Polish side, the drive towards Berlin was marked by a grim determination. The personal accounts of Red Army soldiers and Polish fighters reveal a mix of vengeance, hope, and exhaustion. The liberation of their homelands and the defeat of Nazism were within grasp, yet the cost in human lives and suffering remained steep. A Polish officer's letter to his family encapsulates this duality. Each step forward is a victory against our oppressors, yet each victory comes soaked in the blood of our brothers. The impact of the Battle of Bautzen on civilians caught in the crossfire provides a stark reminder of war's indiscriminate cruelty. The bombardment and street fighting left a trail of destruction, uprooting families and decimating communities. Eyewitness accounts from survivors detail the chaos and desperation of trying to find safety amidst the violence. One civilian, recalling the terror of the battle, described, The ground shook and the sky was ablaze. We hid, prayed, and hoped for a dawn without gunfire. Despite the overarching narrative of conflict, there were fleeting moments where the common humanity of both sides pierced through the fog of war. Instances of soldiers aiding wounded enemies, civilians sheltering stranded fighters, or brief ceasefires to collect the dead and wounded highlight the complex tapestry of human emotions and ethical dilemmas faced by individuals. One such story involves a German medic and a Soviet soldier, wounded and trapped together in a bombed-out building. Over the course of a night, the medic tended to both their wounds, sharing water and stories of home. As dawn broke, they parted ways, enemies in the conflict but united in their shared struggle for survival. The personal narratives from the Battle of Bautzen offer profound reflections on the nature of war, the resilience of the human spirit, and the indelible scars left on those who endure it. Soldiers and civilians alike emerge from the battle with stories of loss, courage, and sometimes redemption. These stories serve as a powerful reminder of the cost of conflict and the importance of remembering the individual lives behind the historical events. The Road to Post-War Europe the Battle of Bautzen, while a localized engagement in the waning days of World War II, had implications that reverberated far beyond its immediate tactical outcomes. This chapter explores how the battle influenced the shaping of post-war Europe, the onset of the Cold War, and the legacy it left on international relations and the geopolitical landscape of the 20th century. As the dust settled on the battlefields of Bautzen, the Allied victory in Europe was imminent. However, the alliances that had formed to defeat the Axis powers were beginning to show signs of strain. The Battle of Bautzen underscored the military prowess of the Soviet Union, which would soon emerge as a central figure in the bipolar world order that characterized the Cold War. The engagement demonstrated the Red Army's capability and willingness to assert its influence over Eastern Europe, shaping the post-war negotiations and the eventual division of Europe into Western and Soviet spheres of influence. The outcomes of battles such as Bautzen played a role in defining the borders and ideologies that would divide Europe for the next four decades. The Iron Curtain, a term popularized by Winston Churchill, but whose foundations were laid in the aftermath of such conflicts, would see Germany itself divided into East and West. Bautzen, situated in what would become East Germany, found itself on the front lines of this division, experiencing firsthand the political, social, and economic ramifications of a continent split in two. In the years following the war, Europe faced the monumental task of reconstruction and reconciliation. The battle-scarred landscapes, including areas around Bautzen, required rebuilding not just in physical terms, but also in the collective psyche of the European people. The Marshall Plan and other initiatives aimed at rebuilding Europe were critical in this phase, focusing on economic recovery, political stability, and the prevention of future conflicts. The Battle of Bautzen, with its stories of sacrifice and temporary victory amidst the broader context of defeat, contributed to the narrative that underscored the need for a peaceful and united Europe. 
The battle of Bautzen's legacy in the post-war era is multifaceted. On one hand, it represents the last gasps of the Second World War in Europe, a symbol of the futility of resistance against the inevitable tide of Allied victory. On the other hand, it offers lessons on the cost of war, the importance of strategic foresight in international relations, and the need for diplomacy to avert future conflicts. As Europe moved into the Cold War period, the memories of battles like Bautzen influenced both military strategies and public perceptions of the Soviet Union and its Western counterparts.